The Internet of Things is an $800 billion industry with over 8.4 billion connected devices online and spending predicted to reach nearly $1.4 trillion by 2021. Most of these devices need to connect to the Internet to function. However, current solutions such as cellular, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth are suboptimal. They are too expensive, too power-hungry, or too limited in range. The Helium Network is a decentralized wireless network that enables devices anywhere in the world to wirelessly connect to the Internet and geolocate themselves without the need for power-hungry satellite location hardware or expensive cellular plants. Powering the Helium network is a blockchain with a native protocol token incentivizing a two-sided marketplace between coverage providers and coverage consumers. With the introduction of a blockchain, we inject decentralization into an industry currently controlled by monopolies. The result is that wireless network coverage becomes a commodity fueled by competition available anywhere in the world at a fraction of current costs. That's the beginning of the Helium white paper. Sounds fancy, like most white papers, but there's one major difference. Helium has countless real world applications and some huge backers. In this video, we will fly through a Helium slide deck that shows just one of the real world applications of the Helium network. The integration example happens to be with Mark Bainoff's Salesforce. <music> Hey everybody, thank you for being here. Welcome to another video. Special thank you to everyone who's been liking and commenting and providing feedback uh, in, my, in my previous videos. That's really the reason I've been doing this is to, to start a community and try and help people and get some good information out there. So thank you to all of you guys. A special thank you to everyone who's subscribed and if you have not yet subscribed, I ask that you please do. It would be really, really cool. And also, if you subscribe, there is a much lesser chance that you will miss the giveaway because that is coming up hopefully next week. So please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss that. Now, before we get to the video, there's one thing I want to touch on that sort of covers two different things, and that is um, the scams that I've been seeing in, on YouTube and on the internet in general, specifically in the crypto space. So one example is that there was someone who asked me in the comment section if I reached out to them asking if they were interested in buying an antenna I was selling. Thankfully, that person uh, replied in the comment section and I replied to them saying, no, that is a scam. I would never do anything like that. Thanks for confirming. But please just be very, very cautious. There's a lot of scammers out there and scams going on. I would never try and sell you guys anything or ask you to call a cell phone or a telegram or anything like that. None of that stuff is me. Please be very cautious. I don't want anyone to get in trouble or send anyone some money or anything like that. Um, and that brings me to my second point, which is uh, in my previous video, I mentioned the, the hotspots that are online on eBay for sale. I didn't really say much about them. I just mentioned them and how I thought it was funny, but I really would discourage anyone from purchasing any of those. You really don't know who's selling it. You don't know if it's legit. You don't know if it's the real deal. There's also a possibility that those are locked devices if they are originally connected to someone's wallet and then disconnected, I believe that the hotspot will lock and it is the, unusable. It is only connected. Once it's connected to a wallet, I think that is the only wallet it would work for. So please, please, please be very cautious. I don't advise anyone to buy those. Uh, we don't know where they're coming from or if it's being drop shipped or anything like that. Now, let's get to the video. Before we get to the video, quick update on the numbers here. We're, oh, we're teetering on 27,000 hotspots and we have 107 days until the rewards happen, which is very exciting stuff. So we're going to talk about this presentation from Helium that was given at Dreamforce in 2017. It documents a application of Helium inside of I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Salesforce, which is a leading sales platform that is run and founded by Mark Bainoff. Now, the this article explains a little bit about what was going on. Um, it gives a little bit of a background. So what it is is, I'll read this quickly. Phil is in charge of a warehouse operations for the large grocery and pharmaceutical conglomerate Bisbee. Bisbee sells a number of perishable goods and drugs which must be kept in climate controlled environments or they will spoil. 
However, climate control is expensive to install and operate, and there are numerous Bisbee distribution centers where climate control is typically unnecessary. So this is giving an ex a real world example of a company that could use and implement the helium network and how, and this presentation is going to outline how that would work. This presentation, the first page we see here, a lot of people would go right over this, but it is, it is very interesting because this is documenting an integration of Helium and Salesforce. Meanwhile, Mark Bainoff is one of the major or main backers here. As you can see, there are, there are eight listed here. He's one of them or his foundation is one of them. That is very interesting because he is, not only is he investor or backer of the platform, but he believe apparently he believes in it enough where he has actually integrated it into his platform, which is very interesting and it's very promising to see that. So this is showing us the end-to-end -end, uh, sort of workflow. This isn't very important to us. It's a little bit technical, but we move here and this makes it a little bit easier to understand. So here we have Phil, the operations and logistics manager. He's in charge of maintenance, replenishment, and repair. And he is using, you can see we're following these lines here. He's using Salesforce, the Salesforce interface on the web portal. Now the web portal, the Salesforce interface is connected to a Helium gateway. And that Helium gateway is connected to these here, which I think there's, honestly to me, they look like beds, but I guess these are some sort of temperature controlled freezers or something like that. Very weird diagram, but nonetheless, this is the next slide where it's showing even more of the workflow. So it is, this is, I think those are some sort of fridge or freezer because this is talking about temperatures. So you can see here, normal 100. Now this, keep in mind, this is inside of Salesforce database uh, or the Salesforce interface, I should say. When the temperature returns to normal operating temperatures or the door is shut, the state returns to normal. So that is when Phil, who is looking at this and using this, using Salesforce, green means good, everything's normal. State changes when the door is opened, a work order is meet, with medium priority is automatically created. Now this, it is automatically informing Phil that the door was opened. And since this is a climate controlled area, if the door is open too long, the temperature will rise too high, which is not good. So this, that's why I'm assuming it's with medium priority because it's just saying it was detected as opened. Um, so it's letting Phil know that if it keep, if it stays open, it's going to be bad, but it's just giving him a, a signal that it was open. Now, obviously if it's open too, if it is closed, it'll go back to green. And if, if it is left open and the temperature rises too much, it will go to red. Here we can see state changes from normal to high temperature detected when temperature is too high. A work order with high priority is automatically created. This is what happens if the temperature rises too much. It is now high priority. Phil needs to go over there and get that temperature down by closing the door. So this is showing how helium is able to connect what's going on at this facility with this door and the temperature to Salesforce very inexpensively compared to having an entire Wi-Fi network set up or something like that. And it is showing how it is interacting with Salesforce, which thousands of companies use today. And it's showing how it's integrating into that, this platform. Now this is much more technical stuff. This is showing where the actual helium atoms go and how it has actually put into Salesforce to get the right outputs for the different color priorities and stuff like that. That's, we don't need to really look at that. This is more of, uh, of the back end, how the records are kept in the back end to, to let people know where things are. And obviously in Salesforce, it's extremely intuitive and you could add a description um, like, like this description here so that all this complicated stuff gets boiled down to a door. A door open has been detected in the warehouse. It's very, very simple. And as you can see here, an automatic work order makes it easy for crews to respond, avoiding the high cost to transport perishable goods to another warehouse. So this just shows how this integration makes it possible to really stay on top of things that normally th there won't be someone standing there all day or a Wi-Fi network or someone to call somebody or, or anything like that. Helium makes full end-to-end -end Salesforce Internet of Things experience seamless, cost-effective, and highly 
secure. And that is the end of the presentation. I wanted to share this with you guys because a lot of people don't realize that this exists and that this is a, a real integration with uh, a major, major company like Salesforce, who not only they an, an amazing company, but they are also run by Mark Banoff, who is also an investor in Helium. Uh, I'm really driving that home because I think that's a huge thing here. The fact that his fund is is invested and it's being integrated into Salesforce is just a really good sign in general. Um, and I think that this application is just one example of hundreds that we could think of with regards to distribution centers or dog collars or all the other ones you've heard of. And it's just really, really interesting. I wanted to share that with you guys. And we also can't forget that there's also the more recent developments of the 5G that I've mentioned in my previous videos. And that a lot of times overshadows these other, uh, these other applications that are more of the original applications, but these are still very much a real world application. And it's extremely important to keep this in mind in when we're talking and thinking about Helium. A lot of people get lost with the price and stuff, but this stuff is very, very informative and applicable to real companies and real problems that are going on. And it just demonstrates a way that the Helium network really can can help. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it useful and learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you're still here and you've made it to the end, please smash that like button. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.